In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of bat surveys in the UK and what planning authorities in Derbyshire require from you. In short, a bat survey is carried out primarily to discern if there is or isn't a bat roost present in your property or development site. But the survey also provides information on the species of bat if the roost is active and the features that might be attracting them to your property. During a bat survey, we look for evidence such as bat droppings, prey remains and bats themselves, both alive and dead. We also look for suitable roosting features and entry points that bats commonly use to roost or enter a property with such as loose tiles and fleshing, cracks in the brickwork, and enclosed dark spaces. Once this information is collected, the report may show that your property is bat-free or unsuitable for bat habitation, in which case this can be used to help your local planning authority grant you planning permission. However, if a bat roost has been found or there is a likelihood of bat activity, further bat emergent surveys will be needed, after which advice on mitigating the effects on present bat roosts may be given. Advice offered may be moving the bats to a nearby suitable habitat or putting up bat boxes near the site, encouraging them to move roosts. A license will be required before you disturb a bat roost, and Arbtech can advise on this. There are two main types of bat surveys, the preliminary roost assessment and the bat emergence survey. The preliminary roost assessment is the first step in finding out if you potentially have a bat presence on your property. This can be carried out during the daytime at any time of the year and will consist of an ecologist visiting to look for signs of bat activity on the site, such as bat droppings, prey carcasses, urine stains and so on. They will also look to evaluate features on the property that may provide a suitable roosting habitat. These include features such as raised roof tiles that bats can roost underneath and gaps in the eaves that will allow them to access into the loft space. This survey will grade your property from negligible, low, moderate or high potential for bats. The outcome will determine if you need an emergent survey and how many you may need. If you have a negligible potential for bats, the ecologist will have found no evidence of bat activity or potential roost habitats. This may be all you need to provide to your local planning authority to help show your development will not negatively affect local bat roostings or habitat. For low to moderate, where potential roosts have been identified, you have to go on to have at least one emergence survey performed. High potential sites where evidence of bats has been observed will require at least three bat emergence surveys to assess the activity of bats in the area. If an emergence survey will be needed, this may be carried out during dusk or dawn between the months of May and September and is to help to determine if the roost is active, the species that are using it and the size of the bat colony. This information is used to determine the right kind of mitigation. If you're planning a development in Derby, you need to be open to the possibility that bats may be roosting on your site. Bats are prevalent throughout Derbyshire, and in 2018, a local bat group found bats in every part of the county. Several factors can increase your chances of encountering bats on your site. For example, if your development is close to the River Dwaint, you're more likely to find bats or their roosts because bats feed on clouds of insects that are drawn to the water. As you go beyond the city limits and into the Derbyshire lowlands, you'll start to see hedgerows, which are often vital for bats and form an integral part of their habitat. To be certain, we highly recommend that you ask your local planning authority directly if you require a bat survey to be carried out in your location before they grant planning permission. All species of bats are protected by Section 9 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, as well as Schedule 2 of the Conservation of Habitats and Species Regulations 2017. This regulation makes it an offence to harm or disturb bats in their roosts. To ensure the safety of local habitats and the replacement of roosts where needed, if you have to destroy a roost to complete your development, you will require a European Protected Species Licence from Natural England. Failure to acquire the correct licensing or to carry out building works that may affect bats can result in a hefty fine with no upper cap. If you still have any questions, please get in touch and we'll be happy to answer them.